We travel to one of New Zealand's so-called most dangerous communities, Raupunga, to hear their story. The boys are busy looking in the mirror at the car that the fellas jump me now with a shotgun. And there's other car can ram the from the side. I'm Rungo King, professional strongman, business owner and loving family man. I'm embarking on a new journey in my life where filmmaker friend Mitch and I will be visiting communities from all over and learning how they live their lives. My goal is to show the world the unordinary things of these ordinary people. This is A Local's Tale. Raupunga is a small community located 35 kilometers down the coast from Wairo. With only a population of around 1,500, Raupunga is known as one of New Zealand's most dangerous communities. And those that decide to pass through Raupunga are warned by surrounding communities to not stop in and to keep on driving through. It sounds ridiculous to me because I spent most of my youth growing up in Mohaka, just around the corner from Rupuma. I understand the community has had its challenges, making news headlines for not so good reasons. Most recently making headlines for being targeted in a van shooting from a rival gang, not from the area. Take a look at that. The van was left riddled with bullet holes. The Rupuma YMP senior rugby team were on their way back from a game. In the van alongside the senior players were some of their children. Luckily, no injuries were received. As you enter Raupunga, you pass the largest viaduct in Australasia. Such a large structure stands at the entrance to such a small community with such a large story to be told. How bad can Raupunga really be? Mitch and I head to Raupunga where we meet up with local sharer's boy and his son Will as they prepare for their morning of sharing ahead. We're just at um, Karamu Station, uh, owned and operated by uh, Cyril Brown. We're just doing a bit of a fundraiser for our tamariki. Got a few sheep this year, not many. And um, yeah, a bit of a hot morning to start and that's us, we're into it. We've been doing this for uh, 30 plus years, I suppose. Yeah, might be more, eh, bro? Yeah. Lose count after a few years. <laughs> My son William, he's been with me since he was 16, 17 years old. He's going on 40. I've had the business the same power we're sharing since uh, 1987, I think. But um, before that, it was just coastal sharing. My dad's run, Woolly Coastal Sharing. I just come back and took over his run. We would have been back here about 23, 24 years old. I'm going on 21 now, so. <laughs> but I come back with the reason to carry on Dad's run. Most of his shares from his time were um, migrating down to the South Island. And I uh, started my own sharing run. Started off with five sheds. Now we total 50, 50 odd. I run a crew of about 12 shares, <coughs> mainly employ about 30 old people, peak season. Within the community, you, you employ all whānau? Whānau base. Whānau base. Majority, majority yep. Pahawera too. Hence the name Pahawera. Pahawera, yeah, yeah. I always wanted to stipulate that. Mm. There was a nega bit of negativity out there towards Pahawera, but yep. we're turning that all around. The young fellow in his generation is turning that around big time. That's good, it gives them stability while they're living in Ropunga. Mm. Hence the main reason why I employ Ropunga and Moaka people. Yep. Mainly, but I've also got people working from Waro. Yep. Don't care what colour they wear, mm. who they are, Chinese, married. They, they want to come in our vans, come in the vans. 
there's an opportunity for Sherry now to go out into the world, yeah. which has happened mm. with our whanau. A lot of my cousins have established runs in Australia. Wow. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, and they've been everywhere. I had young Gerald's nephew was sharing for me. We started when he was 17, 18. We sent him over to England when he was 80. Mm -hmm. yeah, so the opportunities are, opportunities are there. It's not an easy game, mm. as you can see today. We haven't, me and the boy haven't shown for a few years. <coughs> just out of retirement, hey, just for us. Just for you, bro. Far out. sat down with Boy to hear more about Rupunga. How has it impacted the whānau angst of how everyone outside of our community within New Zealand sees Rupunga? How, how has that affected the whānau? It's made the whānau more resilient, um, more self-sufficient too. Mm. It's, it, it's a sensitive subject because um, that, that's been going on for years, you know. We mm. could say gangs, okay. Mm. But it hasn't, it's it was a Raupunga thing. Mm. Oi. There was even a division between Raupunga and Moaka. Mm. And we, we knitted that, didn't we, mm. when we, we started Kids Rugby. Mm. We brought the two communities together. Mm. But with, with that stigma out there about Raupunga, and, um, it makes us more better as people. Mm -hmm. it makes us stronger and more unified. Mm. I see it in our work. You know, my vans, my Pahawiri sharing vans, have been targeted going to work sometimes mm. because we're supposed to be carrying so-called this element that everyone in town wants to give a hearty mm. but they haven't yet so mm. it's happened at college yeah right back when we were at college mm. it wasn't black power it was the Ropunga bus mm. we had that you know everyone i don't know is that jealousy or i call it jealousy hatred maybe mm. like what you're talking about it's it's, it's there right but what these boys, this generation is doing now with using rugby as a tool and netball as a tool and bringing all, look at that team from Napier, they come mm. up here. Mm. They're not worried about it now. They, they'll come here any time. Mm. When we were playing seniors, even YMP of now, yeah. teams defaulted. Yes. Even this year we had a default, you know, from a, a, a well-known stronghold rugby team in Napier, Marae Nui. They defaulted. Why? Why? We're only playing rugby. Mm. Yeah. See? It's back to what that, that what you hear, yeah. you know, and it's been going on for years. Yep. How do we change it? I just keep doing what we're doing. Mm. And people that come here will go away and call about what their experience of Raupunga. Mm. While we're on that top of you were telling, recently the media portrayed like there was a gang war at a rugby game while you zoom water where one of your vans was actually shot at and tried to be taken off the road. Yep. Can you can you share a bit about that? What happened there with us? Just just briefly. It was just the element on the red side turned up at the rugby. It's all mm. None of them were even bloody playing. Mm. They just turned up. The boys were playing. That boys were losing. Mm. Yeah, we were losing the game. Ten minutes before half time. Just seen them coming in. Knew what was going to happen. And and you knew something was up. Something. Well, was we wrong. didn't think they were going to shoot the van. But yeah, mm. that's what happened. Yeah, but it got rammed. The boys are busy looking in the mirror at the car, the fellas jumping now with a f***ing shotgun and there's other car f***ing ran the from the side. Yeah. Oh. Oh, smart. We, we forgot about it straight away. Mm. And I'll tell you that now, right? We, do, we don't really call yeah, about yeah. that anymore. Yeah. It happened after that happened. It was over as far as the locals were concerned. It's just as media made it bigger. And That's exactly right. Yeah. M m media yeah. portrayed it and made it out to be something that it wasn't really. Well, you couldn't, when, you couldn't well, change it. At happened. the same time, like you're saying, all that stuff has happened for generations. Yeah, but it's isolated incidents. You know, mm. it's, it's, it's happened all the time. But we, we just struck it off. We 
then sat down with the Ropunga Black Power chapter to hear more about the van shooting as well as learn more about the community through their eyes. We got the utmost respect when it comes to rugby games and they, mm. they, we go there for our kids, we mm. go there for just to play the game for our for our hood. Oh mm. yeah, for our hood, for Ropa and Y and P. And we don't we don't take the game when we go there we ain't taking the game with us. We we going there to play for our community, mm. play for our town. But that's the good thing and that's one thing I think we needed to share here is that like no matter who came here to play at this yep. field, when you came through these gates and you came onto this field, you were welcome. Yep. Most importantly, you were safe. You were safe. Yep. Yep. No matter who's parked around the outside of that field, everyone here knew. Yep. Well, I tried to tell my family from what I knew. You come here, you're safe. We're not too sure when we go there, but we'll come. You know? You always, always leave late. You got our word. We'll always turn up for these games. And, and <coughs> that speaks volumes. Yeah. No matter what, you fellas as a whānau, a whole load up, and you hit down there. Yeah. yeah. Manukaha Rupunga has a strong name. You know, you've the name echoes through the land. You guys are renowned as staunch tough a whole lot of what I've heard. Mm. A lot of that's just from media though. Mm. You know what they and you see the bad they only mm. the bad on us and yep. you know, when something we do something and it makes the news it always gets pulled off. Mm. But they don't they don't see the good that happens mm. around here. You know you'd be surprised that we've had different ropus other let's say the opposition come here treated as Manuhiti, as mm. visitors. And uh, they go away and they see us in another life. Those fucking, those Rupunga are tough. Mm. <laughs> yeah. mm. They're actually quite humble. Take the pitch away and you see the people as a whole. Yeah. yeah. True whanau. Yeah. yeah. Regardless of what colour you are. Um, and that's what I love about this place. <laughs> what are you guys doing to, for the next generation coming through, brothers? What things are you putting in place so it's not so hard for them, so the future is brighter? What are we doing there? Our kids were uh, educated mm. in, in shit that we missed out on. And um, the future looks bright for them because we as parents and a big goal to our mothers. Because without our mothers, there'll be no brothers. Mm. So they are our backbone. They tell us what we need to be done and we do it. We don't go out and prove ourselves to nobody. Our proof is in our family, our kids. Our, most of our kids, we don't bring them up our way. We are the soldiers. We are the warriors. We are the gatherers of our people. We are the protectors. We try and put them on a right path or on a yep. path. Yep, yep. And then before, you know, this will always be here. Mm. They even want to put, try mm. something else. This place here has generated like fucking something like 20 odd plus Māori All Blacks mm. and All Black. Uh, future All Blacks coming up. Our kids strive in a cup of haka, anything, anything they want to do. And that's us as parents is to encourage them. Um, haki can be anything you want, except, uh, the, I would say. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> well, that's another story. I remember this fellow when he was little, he's getting a little married boy from more haka. Mm. But you know, he was one of the light that, that, that shined from here. I think that if he didn't go there, or wherever he went... Oh, I'll tell you right now, if I didn't go there... Sitting over here, and I'll be in the league. I say that too, though, like, yeah, if it wasn't yeah. for Bomb, yes. because Bomb, yes. Bomb was the one who put me on that plane and said, you need to go, uh, he didn't want that life for me, you know what I mean? That's just fear of my faith. He, he said mm. there's things I need to do in my life that I need to go out and do. You know, and that was his, uh, his decision for me. Yeah. You know, but I know firsthand that if I did stay, I'd be here. Yeah. And I know that. Yeah. You know, and I see that oh, all yeah. the time. Yeah, yeah well, see, this life ain't for you, well. mm. hey, Yeah, mm. more local, cool and glamorous, but mm. yeah, they feel... Yeah, so it's not for a faint heart. Yeah, 100%. What does the future look like for Ripple? We've got 90% of our praise of work again there. All sharing. We only got about two or three that are unemployed there. So there's a lot of work around here. Well, our brother on the other you might interview. He hires me to solve our friends. But yeah, the young fellas are fucking doing well in the sharing. They're looking after their families, and that's the main thing, really, at the end of the day. Their kids are thriving.
He gave me only these hundreds because they made poppy. Yeah. What's your name? Yeah. You got a small community. We got a lot of good things going on. Here. Yeah. We got this gym up here now. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They we... got uh, they got like boxing training. Yeah. Look at uh, that, brother. Yeah, yeah. Very, you know, so we've been going doing their boxing thing. And look, we had Jason Sabi. Yes. Last yeah, week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, now the bros are going up to the um, their city fitness. Oh, true. Oh, wow. True. Yeah. So they're fundraising for it. You know, so trying to take the bros, you know, out of out of rope and like show show these these bigger trainers. Man, what we got, what we got brother. Yeah. Yeah. Also that yeah. upskilling them too, yeah. brother. To yeah. go and learn and to bring it back here yeah, to so, the final here. So the bros will be going uh, like you know going up there sparring with like, other sign yeah. and doesn't that open up the mind though yeah. for our people, for yeah. our next generation? Like oh. where you going, bro? This is what opening up doors yeah. to s let them see like what. What? Where are you going? You know what I mean? Because they only see half of these people on TV. Yeah. You only hear about this. Yeah. So to see people actually going up to do that and coming back and sharing the knowledge, bro, that yeah. opens up the mind. Yeah, hard, it opens up the heart for them to say, hey, That's you know, it's a huge opportunity. My brothers, I appreciate you for, for letting us come in here. <laughs> We then headed across the road to the YMP rugby fields. My young fella Shaq is over there warming up with the junior YMP uh, rugby team. What's special is this is where I started my rugby career. This is Shaq's first rugby game. I'm um, in Australia, he plays hockey, soccer, AFL, and touch, uh, where we live that and play rugby. So today is a moment for all of us, especially me, because this is grassroots. Um, I was his age when I first started playing here and I played here my entire teens growing up and then eventually playing for the YMP seniors so as a family this is a moment and a moment we'll remember. Kazi, look after the bro, <laughs> he'll be all good. Don't forget hey guys, positive talk out there. Okay. And we've got the old Dad, Dad. You know who our starting lineup was? Yeah. 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 So what we want to do instead of pulling down our mates we're going to pull them up hey guys. YMP Kids Rugby. Tell us about Rongs, how long has it been running for? 1996. Me and her, her buru, had a kōrero in one night and he said we should start a kids rugby team. So we put a team together we ended up having two teams. We ended up going to town and playing in Warra and we won, won the competition. Mm. And from there it just took off. The following, the next year we ended up having five teams. Kobe, 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 Back in our day, it was huge. It was huge. And I remember growing up, it was the biggest thing that we can do in our community. You know, all week, we waited for the weekend for us to go down and play. Not only play the game of rugby, but play with our cousins, play with our family. It was something that brought the community together. Hunt him, Shaki. Good boy, Shaki. <laughs> oh, Shaki boy. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Fast forward to today, it's back, it's thriving. Yep. There's so much that's been, that has gone into what's happening right now. What happened from then to now? Was there a downtime? Oh, can you fill us in on that? Yep. Well, I coached the kids for eight years. And William, my son, he was with me for two years mm. and he went to college. I wanted to follow my sons to um, college rugby. Mm. Then, as you know, yep. William got hurt in his mm. accident. And that was, that yep. sort of killed off my passion a bit yep. Yep. for following him. Mm. And then Sham comes along and I thought, right, I'll follow him. Mm. He was doing good. Yeah. Then he goes and gets killed. Mm. So that's really cut my passion. Yep. The passion for it just went. Yep. Yep. When Sham died, it just went. And that was that big gap, mm. 20 year gap. But now, 20 years later, yeah. my son's starting what we started and yeah. he started all off again yeah. and he's got our my grandsons are playing yeah. my granddaughters yeah. yeah and they're doing well so i'm i'm buzzing but we we rekindled we my interest yes. again yeah definitely yeah he's oh, doing good yeah but you're rushing it that's right man everyone's rushing it just settle two hit ups and then feed to the back hey, hey, you need a mark up on your man guys that's why we talk about pointing yep. okay Start hitting those rucks and let them know that you guys are there. <coughs> How is it for you to see the rugby coming back here in Ropunga for the next generation? Yeah, probably after after a few years, a couple of years ago, um, the community was pretty divided. 
due to due to a number of, of different things. And I guess it was it was up to the leadership in the area to mm. kind of uh, wonder how we were going to mend everything back yep. together, bro. Yep. So um, rugby, sport, basketball, you know, YMP is uh, the new establishment has just started this season this year, which would have kicked off in February, March. Yep. And we've got 130 odd registrations wow. under that umbrella, so it's it's pretty massive for us. You know, we've only we're only a small community of That's right, yeah. of 30 houses, 30 40 houses. So. Mm. Go shake, go shake, go shake. With William and him, they've got this generation of um, mm. young fellas around here now. I'll say that, but they're not young. Mm. They're in their 30s now, and they're mature, and they they. They all just jelling together uh, with with YMP and um, and the YMP's their focus at mm. the moment, and it's bringing everyone in. Mm. Honestly, it's making the whole community alive again. So it is a community that holds a lot of a lot of negativity. You know, mm. um, it's known for for a lot of bad things. But yeah, we're we're hoping to try and turn the corner. You know, uh, implement some positivity around. Hopefully, try to get the kids to start thinking about other options. You know? Yes, yes. There's, there's definitely other options there. Um, yeah, we, 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 we don't have a hell of a lot to work with at the moment. Mm. We're working with what we got, and it seems to be pretty successful. Well, just like to just say outfit the team, up to put outfit all the whole teams. You're looking at something like 30 grand, mm. 30, 40 grand. Mm. You know, and that's a lot for a little. A little community. little community to fundraise just to, so mm. they can go out there and look pretty on the field. Mm. And you know, you saw it today. Yeah. You know, they need uni uniforms. That's why I was talking to the man himself, Toto Walker. He's the head of the power where to trust. I've got to focus on him. Because that's the man who makes big decisions. And, and they've got the checkbook. They've got the checkbook at the same time, too. They need to get out of their office and come down and see what's really happening. Why, why have we got to go looking around for funding when it's really there? It's all there. It's always been there. But yeah. It's already been there, you know, just to get them going again. <laughs> oh, shaky, <it>. Go, boy! <laughs> oh, go, boy! <laughs> go, boy! He's away! <laughs> oh, man! <laughs> Lay that mo! <laughs> oh, boy, get you there! Oh, man! Snap <laughs> 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 that fing kid, bro! What does it remind you of, man? Well, not me, because I was useless when I was growing up. <laughs> ah, that was mean. Um, yeah, that's exciting, bro. To see that Imam um, just naturally, naturally love the game, and he's moving well. I'm pumped for him, yeah. Definitely you could see a, f a future, maybe. <laughs> My man. Wow, how cool is that? Good. Good, first rugby game. All of these years I've told you about rugby and how cool it is. What do you think? Pretty cool. Pretty cool. You want to keep playing? Yeah. Proud of you. How many tries did you get? Two. Two tries for this game. Proud of you. Bring him some knuckles, bruh. Ah, let's go. With a bit of guidance, which we have, support. Yep. You know, we can create the next future All Blacks. Yep. You know. That's right. We can. We can do that. That's right. And with the, with the, with the new generation, our brother William, and then with them setting up, the mindset of low, we need our own club rooms, we need a strong foundation there, our head yep. base, so we can yep. go out and do that. To see our whanau over there, you know, a barbecue off the back of the trailer, in front of the sea container, you know, that, that you know, that's ground grassroots rugby. But for me, mm. no, nah, I'm on board here, I'm jumping on to help out no. the best way I can because I came from this. Yep. You know, right. this was a strong foundation for me for the rest of my life. How I'm doing now, this is where, this is grassroots for me. So coming here and seeing what's happening today is really connecting me back to the land here and the, and the, and the whānau here and actually see the bigger picture. One, two, three, whānau! After the rugby, we were invited to a ball that the community had put on at their marae. We headed up early to learn more about the importance of this ball for their community. This is the Gat Upu, which is uh, the Growing Hope from Achieving Teenagers um, yeah. Youth Group. Yeah. And Throughout our thing program, we do holiday programs mm. every holidays, yeah. and um, this is our ball function that they yep. wanted, and they'll be having it tonight about yeah. five o'clock, and that's what this program for this holidays is. You 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 set a ball. This doesn't happen in a small community like this, where something comes together this big, where 
all the kids get to actually dress up, do themselves up, and then use it actually put it on. Like, it's beautiful in here. You've set up like it's an actual ball, like the, in a city or something yeah, like that. Yeah, no, it doesn't actually happen around here because it's not the way we really do things. But mm. um, we needed to change things up, show yep. different side of things of um, what happens in a hood. Um, and it's more of a, it's a fancy dress type thing. Mm. It's not mm. come the way we always yeah, are. Yeah, yeah, and, um, it's an initiative from the teenagers, they sort yeah. of wanted it, so we had to go with what they wanted and mm. that's just what is the, this is the outcome of um, yep. our corridor with our young ones. The community support is amazing, but has it been hard trying to get other people on board, like other um, people to try and help? Definitely, it's our hardest problem is the thing with, um, with actually getting um, people to be involved or people to pay for these sort of things. It's mm. actually one of the most hardest things for us. We rely on volunteers throughout our throughout our actual time, to, um, we've actually a 25 years established group and it's just always run on family just showing up and people coming in and donating their free time. Um, we sort of got some help from the Warrell commissioning table for this little group mm. for, to make this happen which mm. is a lot easier, whilst we would have just had to do it with um, going to get native from, from mm. the beach and do it that way. Mm. It must be hard, you must have your moments brother where you're like I'm only one man, you know, we're only one whanau, like, we're doing our very best in this community to do what we can. Oh, it must be hard. Definitely, if you could see how I was just with the kids out there, <laughs> definitely. It is, um, it does get on top of you, but if you're there for the right cause, mm. you're for the children, it's sort of, um, the screaming in there goes away once the activities happen and the, and the events finish, yep. we will just sit down relaxing. Because mm. it's all non-alcohol and non-smoking yeah. environment, yeah, yeah, you're not allowed to do any of that yeah, stuff yeah, under yeah. these co yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's uh, trying to show our young ones that you, you can have yeah, good times yeah, yeah. outside of um, yep. those atmospheres. Yes, yeah. And we do do it and it's, it is difficult. To, um, the young ones are sort of, the teenagers get a bit not so interested in, mm. as they get older, not mm. so interested in those sort of things. Mm. And it's sort of trying to pull them back some year and not grow up too fast, I yeah. suppose, just to be a child as long as you can. It, it, for yourself, it must be hard trying to do as much as you can before they do get to that age where they start making those decisions of where they're going to go. And there's two paths here, right, my brother, that you either go. And, it, and you've seen it all. You, you, you're there with it, bro. How is it for you to see that transition of where the next generation, where they go? And what you're doing right now is giving them options, which is what it's all about. How is it? Is, it? is that the reason why you're trying to make change? You're trying to give a different example of what life can yes, be? Um, yes, from my point, yes it is. Um, and to be honest, I've been losing mm. it. Uh, I haven't always um, won, because mm. I've actually lost a lot of them to be. Not to think, just choose what you want to do in life, and mm. that's where you're going to be. But uh, our Lord, we try to hold kids out of any of their mm. R18 stuff as long as they can possibly. To be honest, the gangs, um, smoking mm. drugs, all of that sort of stuff, we try and keep them away from it as, as long as we can. Yeah. But um, I get sentimental about it too. Hundred percent, brother. I understand. Because oh, you I know, understand. Hey, I understand. we're up here together, we do all that stuff. That. Um, yeah. And there is, um, but as long as we can continue to do these things and keep, well, keep people like you to even be around, because they, hey, you've gone across the world. You come from our Mohaka territory, which is just up the road from us, mm. and um, our Pano and. You've done a lot of things. And I think it's a good light for our kids to see that there are possible possibilities mm. that you can become. Mm. We have cousins who've gone into the Super 15 yep. and that, yep. and yep. we're trying to drag all our younger ones to, to see those people mm. as, um, as, as cool as people too, mm. not just all the other stuff. I think that's a big thing, a part of us, a part of me, bro, is knowing where I come from and what we have, which was nothing. And I think that's why I'm on this mad journey, brother, is mm. to show our people and why I'm here today, but why I'm continuously going to start turning up, because I feel what you're saying. And it's hard for people to understand unless they see one of us trying to do it, bro. So for me, my whole journey, what I've been doing is to, to set that example. So when I come home and I see the kids, and when I tell the kids I'm for me, they don't believe me, bro, you know what I mean? But for me, that's a good thing for me to tell them, I'm just like you. You know, all the kids, I'm just like you. I was running on that paddock like you. I am like you. And if I can do it, you can do it, bro. And that's what we like to see too, because hey, you travel the world, you've done really well for yourself, and, and that's what we need the younger ones mm. to see that it is possible that you can mm. grow into a great thing from here and, and take or cope up with yep. it, especially up there. Uh, you know, Uncle Noah and Auntie. Yeah. Uncle, um, Uncle Bob and Auntie Noah, how they think of the brothers, all the cousins. Mm. Um, but now we, 
I do have a lot of difficulty, but yeah. I rely on them. Yeah. Um, a lot of the cousins come, they dedicate their, their personal hours. This, yeah, yeah, the yeah. stuff doesn't just happen over and night, it's yeah. timeless. Mm. But it, it's worth it at the end. It's worth I it. believe it. Yeah. <laughs> I believe in why I still do it. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. That's, that's really much what we do around here. Um, sports, rugby, youth. Yeah. That's, that's basically our home thing here. Well, I just want to say from the bottom of my heart, thank you for what you're doing and how you're trying to make change, but how you're leading from the front, but most importantly, bro, it takes people like you, brother, in order to have change, someone has to stand up, bro, and I've heard so much positive things about what you're doing for our generation, bro, and the next, and I just want to say I love you, bro, and I thank you for that. Well, Fano, there it is. There's always two sides to a story. Today, we dove into the community of Rupuna, Ngati Pahowera, to see the community through their eyes. On the next episode of A Local's Tale, Join me and Mitch as we travel overseas to Uzbekistan as I compete in a strongman competition representing our culture. Roger! Roger, Roger! What a challenge! What a strongman!